How's it going everyone? Welcome to this painting tutorial. In this video we're going to look at how to paint this Blood Warrior from Age of Sigmar. This is the model that comes in the starter set. And this is going to be a fairly long video because I used uh, up to two or three highlights in some places. You don't have to follow all of them if you are going for a lower quality model. But I decided to go in detail on this one and I like it very much. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to start by priming the model in black. Uh, you can use any primer that you like. I would suggest priming in red because it's easier to cover with corn red, which is going to be this first step. Just go lightly with your primer and uh, we're going to start by giving it a layer of corn red over the whole model. Having a red primer will make this step easier. I'm using a flat brush and lightly thin down paint working fast around the model, uh, making sure that I don't brush over places that are that have paint already drying. It's gonna take a couple of coats to cover well. So stretch the paint well and let it dry and give it a second one. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and use lead belcher and I'm going to pick up all of the chain mail and places that you want to be silver. Here I switch to a size two brush, normal round brush to go into all of those details. We're not very concerned about being clean uh, unless you're getting into the red, but uh, I'm just picking up all of the places that are going to be silver around the model and it's a fairly easy step. In this model I'm working from red as a base and then I'm painting all of the details one by one. You can paint all of it in gold and then work backwards and as many people do. But this is my way of painting and I find myself more comfortable doing it this way. Uh, even if you go, decide to go and do something like that, you can follow the steps for the rest of the colors or the rest of the tutorial to use it in your miniatures as well. Here I'm painting the boots in black with Vallejo model color black. You can use Abaddon black, it's uh, pretty much the same thing. Once it's done, I'm going to go ahead and paint the flesh with Buckman's Glow. I um, kind of like the regular flesh tone, uh, that it's a little bit more peachy, so I'm going with Bogman's Glow instead of the very pallid colors that the models in the box are painted on. But you can switch them and uh, paint with whatever colors you prefer. This is the way I'm doing it, and I'm doing it with a detail brush to be careful and get inside of the crevices and not paint over other things. I'm going to use dried bark for all of the leather pieces around the model. I'm going to use it on the handle of the axe and all of the leather straps that hold the armor together. Also, don't forget to always, always use uh, thin down paint, either by water or drying retardant or whatever medium you would like to use. I really like using uh, drying retarder because it uh, extends the life of the paint on the model. It can work against you if you use too much because the paint takes a long time to dry, but most of the time it just ex extends it just a little bit. Here I'm using Gehenna's Gold and I'm finally painting all the trimming around the model. It's quite a lot, so I see why some people want to instead paint the whole model in Gehenna's Gold first. But I'm, I'm grown accustomed to paint it this way. Uh, the trim is almost always on the outside of the model and it's easy to paint if you have it well thinned down and uh, you have a, a good brush uh, control. And I find it easier to paint what's outside of the model rather than going inside and painting all the panels uh, underneath the gold. But it depends on you. Next I'm going to use Screamer Pink and with this color I'm going to paint the mouth in the stomach of this model. This is kind of weird, I, I never saw this uh, kind of detail on the model until I uh, ordered it, so it's kind of funny. Next I'm using Sundry Dust on all of the bone details around the model. I decided to go with this detail on the chest plate to make it look like bone and also the skull that it's hanging on the loincloth and on the axe. This is 
is very easy, just make sure to thin down the paint and use a couple of coats because Sundry Dust doesn't cover so well on black. But it's, it's a fairly easy step. Once that's done, all of the colors are blocked, so we're going to the wash. Uh, rather than mopping it onto the whole model, I'm going to use a detail brush and I'm going to go into all of the little uh, crevices and kind of line uh, the separation between one color and the other, especially on the reds. Uh, the bone, it's okay if you shade it completely, but around the gold and red, I'm just trying to line in all of the, all of the recesses. Also, uh, in the bone I'm covering completely and on the chainmail I'm covering completely and also on the skin. This is just a selective wash just to save time on cleaning up later uh, because if you if you shade the whole model you're going to have to go back and clean it up. Also the golds are gonna dull down with the matte medium that the wash has inside so uh, I'm just trying to be a little bit more careful and more uh, measured in the way I uh, wash my models. After that the model looks like this. I'm going to go ahead and use Evil Sun Scarlet to highlight the red. Here I'm using a little bit of drying retardant and uh, a detail brush and I'm just painting all the lines that uh, are the most uh, sharp around the model and giving it a little edge highlight. There's not too many edges, so I'm going to color some of the panels on the uh, on the edges as well, just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then I'm going to follow it up with Wild Rider Red and apply this color only on the most sharpest edges, just to make them stand out a little bit more, because the Evil Sun Scarlet doesn't make it stand so much as I would like. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the flesh with Cadian Flesh Stone. This is a very peachy color and it's kind of hard to cover so it's going to need at least two coats. I think I gave it like three of them. Uh, being very careful not to paint on the recesses, especially on the fingers, so that they look two-dimensional and not like just one blob of fingers. Next, I'm going to use Kisla Flesh to give uh, an extra highlight, the extreme highlight on the fingers, uh, concentrating on the knuckles and places that are most protruding on the skin, which is not much. It's only the elbows, uh, the chin, and the fingers. Once that's done, I'm going to highlight with Scrap Brown all of the leather. I'm going to use uh, the detail brush again and edge highlight all of the leather areas very quickly. And give it an extreme highlight with uh, Deathclaw Brown. I like this color a lot, it really m makes the leather stand out a lot and uh, just being very careful to make a finer highlight on the most uh, sharpest edges. You don't have to use it uh, in all of them, but using in some of, some of them to give it a little accent is uh, very effective. Next, Eshin Grey is going to go for the boots because we have to highlight the boots so that they uh, stand out a little bit more because they're very flat and uh, not interesting. I'm just going ahead and uh, giving it a highlight on all of the raised areas and the hardest edges. And then following it up with uh, Downstone. And this color goes again as most of the highlights on the most uh, sharpest or bright brightest edges. Uh, these steps where I'm uh, extreme highlighting should uh, be very quick, just a couple of minutes going around the model and picking up the places that are more raised. Don't spend too much time trying to extreme highlight all of the places because you're going to uh, uh, spend a lot of time and over highlight and that's not good. Here I'm painting the mouth with Tuscar fur and following it up with uh, Pink Horror. 
this was not quite enough highlight for me and uh, off camera I gave it an extra highlight with KDM flesh tone just to make it look more fleshy and uh, I like it how it ended up. Next I'm highlighting all of the silver areas with Rune Fang steel. Uh, only kind of over brushing over the chainmail and if you have any flat panels in silver you just go over the edges or the most raised parts if it's rounded but uh, that's it. With Secret Esperance uh, this color is a little bit difficult to control but I'm going to use it as a highlight for all of the gold areas. I'm kind of trying to pick up all the edges and all of the raised parts and this is the way I paint all of my corn berserkers and uh, world eaters uh, with this kind of uh, bronze color and it looks very nice in my opinion uh, although my paint is getting kind of old and kind of weird uh, I think I still think that this is the way to go with uh, brass for uh, this kind of uh, miniature next I'm going to use Ushapti bone uh, thinned down with water and I'm going to pick up all of the raised edges and parts on the, mo on the uh, bone picking most of the area just leaving the recesses on the previous color and because of the way the Ushapti bone is, we're going to need to give it a couple coats and then follow it up with Screaming Skull and this is only going to go on the sharpest edges, teeth and uh, most raised parts. It's very satisf satisfying for me to paint bone, I don't know why it looks uh, pretty cool. And next I'm going to paint the eyes with Aerial Yellow. I went with Aerial Yellow to make, it look, make the, look, the eyes look a little bit more like demonic or something. Uh, just make sure to have a very sharp point on your detail brush and just touch the little eye. Next uh, I decided to go back to the model once I was finishing it uh, with Runefang Steel and pick up some of the edges on the brass. Just because the uh, artwork and the original models on the box have this very silver edge around the model. So I decided to go with that as well, but just very minimal, just uh, highlighting all of the most sharpest edges just a little bit. And the most raised parts, just to give it an extra highlight. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished model. I had a lot of fun painting this model. I think these kinds of models uh, require a little bit more attention and uh, looking at the model in detail because they have a lot of details similar to the Chosen on the Dark Vengeance set uh, that you have to really f familiarize with the way and the way this model is decorated and uh, figure out what's going to be what color. But overall, uh, at the end, it's very rewarding to paint, I think. But overall, a very uh, nice model to paint, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it entertaining and helpful. And if you like it, don't forget to like the video, comment, and subscribe. That really helps the channel out. And I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for watching my video and if you would like to further support my channel you can become my Patreon on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month and you are helping me create more and better content. If you can't, that's fine because you're helping my channel a lot just for watching and sharing. But you can read all of the details if you follow the link in the description below. I hope you can spare a dollar to make this hobby of mine a job for which I can get paid. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.